Welcome back to the channel. This is Joel Duff. Hey, how are you feeling today? You feeling okay? Are you sure? Are you sure you're all right? You're sure you're not feeling degenerated? I mean, I mean, after all, you are greatly degenerated compared to people from many generations to go. Did, did you realize that? Just jumped on here for a little unscripted duff. That's just what I call like thoughts that I have that I haven't really, uh, you know, processed completely in my mind. But, you know, just like off the top of my head, what's my reaction to something like this, which came through uh, Facebook just the last day. Wisdom from Ken Ham. What does he mean by that? What does he mean that we're greatly degenerated? I guess this could have been an episode of Ham Bites as well, responding to things that Ken Ham has to say. Let's just think about what his audience might be thinking when they see this. I can tell you that they're confused because I've looked at a lot of comments, you know, I've, on this Facebook post, uh, and there's a wide swath of responses, a lot of which are kind of negative, even by fans of Ken Ham. I think they just don't really understand um, what he means by this. So what does Ken Ham and others that suggest that humans are like greatly degenerated? I've heard this phrase from multiple different young earth creations that were degenerated compared to people from generations in the past. I think they typically are referring to that as some kind of either physical decline, could be moral decline, genetic decline, as we just suggested, could be all three of those wrapped up in one. Well, what is it a decline from? Well, it's a decline from an earlier state of what human perfection or even superiority, a time which human beings had uh, a higher moral status, especially in the position in the persons of Adam and Eve, um, or a position of having a more perfect genome or an actual perfect genome, whatever a perfect genome might look like, or having uh, being perfect physical specimens with no blemishes at all. Right, that, that sometime in the past, those types of perfection were met. And therefore, since we don't have that kind of perfection today, we are degenerated over what we were once. So what's he, what's he actually referring to? Well, if you see the link there above it. The link, it goes to AnswersInGenesis.org. Cain's wife, who was she? Cain's wife, who was she? And if you were to follow that, you'd get to this article. Now, I've actually talked about this article on This Week in Creationism. I think it was the last episode of This Week in Creationism. I actually talked specifically about this article and the bit of a surprise that I got when he explains in this article that how Cain, oh, it's, a, it's a classic question, right? Adam and Eve had kids and then one of those is Cain, and Cain ends up being banished, right, from the land around Eden, sent away east of Eden, and there he is going to build a city, and he has a wife, and he eventually has children. Uh, and so where did he get his wife, right? And the simple answer would be, it's got to be one of his sisters, right? If Adam and Eve are the first progenitors of the human race, and the kids that they have are the only offspring that or the only other humans uh, alive at that time but ken ham takes this in a whole different kind of direction most of this article is, is in reference to the degeneration of genomes why because although to him it's obvious that cain's wife is his sister he then has to confront this question of how was it legally morally or ethically able to marry his wife how was he to have relations with his wife? How would that be acceptable when later in scripture that's an unacceptable behavior? And he comes up with a genetic reason for that. Right, so this, this, this little blurb of Ken Ham's is, I think, mostly, mostly about genetics. We're genetically degenerated compared to past generations in his mind. And this is the reason he believes that God eventually instituted the ban against marriage or having relations with sisters, brothers, close family members, cousins, right? Because of this degenerate, this genetic degeneration of the human genome. Because after all, if we had perfect genomes, then one perfect genome crossing another perfect genome should result in more perfect genomes. How could that cause any kind of genetic malformations? 
And so if for him, he's using a genetic reason for God's changing the provisions of what he allowed human beings to do. Marry your sister is fine, but not later because he's protecting human beings against uh, genetic diseases that had cropped up in the human population. So oddly enough, I think that this quote is actually a reference to genetics, to genetic entropy, to genetic decay of the human genome. And what he's saying, if you go into past generations, many generations ago, people had better genomes. So they had better genomes, then today's genomes aren't as good, then we're degenerates. We are degenerated, degenerated genomes. Yeah. And the human human beings are on the road to destruction not just because of their moral ethical uh, failures, but because of their their actual genome falling apart, because mutations are allowed into the system after Adam's sin. So it's very much of a of a dead end, right? Human beings in terms of their physical bodies are a are a dead end in terms of history. And presumably Christ will come again and rapture or take people out of this world, right, to heaven anyone who's still alive. Um, before we finally just completely decay and are incapable of surviving as a species, I've talked about I've talked about this uh, eschatological problem and genetic decay and the and the sort of the the you know, the issues the other issues that are raised by this type of mm, I'll say fatalistic or negative thinking about uh, the future of the human race, both genetically, morally, and physically. Uh, but this little ditty that's being shared on Facebook right now kind of just sort of sums it up. You know, this this attitude that um, everything we're doing now is worse off than what we were in the past. Now, the responses on Facebook, you know, rightly so. Many uh, young earth creationists and followers of Ken Ham were kind of like, really? Are we really degenerate compared to generations in the past? After all, I mean, our lifespans are a lot longer. Um, you know, if I went back to the 1800s, I mean, there was all kinds of diseases that we have now wiped out. Well, from a genetic standpoint, from thinking about it as a, as a type of geneticist and looking at the ancient genomes that we have dug up and sequenced from individuals that are thousands of years old, there really is any evidence that there was less genetic disease in the past than there is now, that there are, you know, as many mutations, uh, there aren't any fewer mutations in the past as we find in the present. The amount of genetic variability in human beings was very similar uh, today as it is in the past. Uh, and so uh, really the evidence for this degeneration really doesn't exist. Um, in McKinham's mind, it has to exist because again, he's starting from an assumption of perfection. You know, and, and go back and watch one of my previous videos. Hopefully I'll remember to link to that that what does it mean a perfect genome right we scratched our head for a long time thinking about what exactly does a perfect genome mean and how could there be what does perfection mean in terms of the physical world um, especially a world in which all organisms have to uh, live in community with other organisms and all organisms have to copy their dna what does it mean to not be able to make a mistake copying one's dna where would new variation come from? How would that actually function? Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense as, as you saw in, in that previous video. Um, but this whole, this whole attitude of we're just degenerates is pervasive in at least the Ken Ham type of young earth creationist literature. We're running down, we're falling apart, and all we can really do is hope that Christ comes soon so that and to take us out of this world of death and decay. I'm not saying that we don't need to be taken out of this world of death and decay, and that we don't look forward to a time at which uh, there is something more than just the the elements that we are exposed to today. But um, this idea that our genomes, like our actual DNA is so much worse off today than it was in the past, uh, isn't warranted, I don't think theologically, but I don't. I definitely don't think from a uh, from the evidentiary point of view, from looking at genomes and genetics, we also don't have a lot of support for that particular concept either. That's it. That's all. I've just, you know, that's just my thoughts on having seen this particular uh, post on Answers in Genesis website and just got me thinking. And I, it, it's something that's been 
uh, on my mind a lot in the last couple of months. And especially as I've read uh, a couple books on the idea of, you know, what is the quality of this world right now? What What is the condition of this world right now? Is it really something that's falling apart, decaying, and, and, and going to as doomed to extinction? Is this really the trajectory of, of history, right? Within the Christian perspective of redemptive history, is everything just on a downhill slide? I mean, sin introduced in the world is a bad thing. I, I, I've done another uh, video on, because uh, if you thought he was talking about moral decline, um, it's very simple to think about uh, the world today being in, in, in moral decay, because so many Americans, and specifically uh, you know, Christians, um, are apt to think of the current culture as in severe moral decline. But I've been doing a whole bunch of reading, all right, from about fundamentalism and the modernist uh, controversy from the late 1800s, early 1900s. And I've been reading about what, you know, Christians thought of the culture at the time. And, you know, the language that they used then is no different than it is today. They thought they were in the end times. They thought nothing could possibly get worse and that everything was in moral decay. Um, and many prior generations have thought the same thing. If you were to, to, again, take a time slice, and although you might think that there's, you know, Christianity is on the wane in the United States or in North America, uh, but take a look at it across the globe, there's more Christians today than there ever have been alive at any particular time. There are many time frames you could go to in the past where you could say, look, the world from, from the Christian moral perspective uh, is in many ways a much better place than it has ever been in its known history. Um, and so talking about degeneration as if, if I just sort of go back to many generations ago, everything was so much better, right? And morally, physically, genetically, spiritually, that all those things are degenerating. Um, I'm going to need a little more evidence for that. Can Ham needs to, to, to like, uh, provide a more stout analysis in order to, you know, convince us of this particular point. All right, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Um, I don't have any more. Uh, well, I never had a script, but now I definitely have run out of things to say. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll sign off. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.